Hey boos, in this video, I give commentary based on my opinion. Nothing is to be taken as factual. We are just here to have conversation. We don't expose and we don't sip tea on this channel. I'm giving you real talk straight, no chaser. Let's see if you can handle it. Oh, hell no. In the black community, I wanna, you know, I don't speak for the black community, but I do think that a lot of black men, they really don't know how to have true faithful relationships. They think because they have money, because they have power that they can treat women any kind of way. Lonnie love the same thing. And that <laughs> is something we need to work on. Hi guys, it's Yanni and I'm back with another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Lonnie Love and her recent statement that was made on The Real that went viral all over social media. A lot of people are saying that she is showing signs of self-hatred and at first, I'm like, no, you guys are just not agreeing with what she's saying. And honestly, personally, when it comes to my opinion um, behind this statement that she made, honestly, it was just irresponsible in my opinion, because if she would have said my experience with black men, they don't know how to have faithful relationships. I would be so much more understanding of where she's coming from, but she led with I'm not speaking for the black community. And then she generalized black men. And, you know, seeing that she's not in a relationship with a black man, it just made her look bad. And that's why so many people are saying, well, she is showing signs of self-hate. But then when I look deeper into what Lonnie has been doing lately on The Real, seeing how she's supposed to be representing Afro-Americans because all the other ladies on The Real, they represent their ethnicities like Jeannie. She represents the Asian community. Adrian represents the Latin community. Tamara represents the biracial community. And now they've added Amanda Seals, who represents the intracultural community, seeing that her dad was Afro-American and her mom was from the Caribbean. So it's just a little disappointing because it's like, you are supposed to represent black women, whether you like it or not. And lately she has just been showing signs of self-hatred and it's not even just towards black men, but also black women. It wasn't too long ago that she got into a little disagreement with Alirz Cross on Twitter and she ended up blocking her. The controversy between fashion model Lyris Cross and comedian and talk show host Lonnie Love began on Twitter. Hello Beautiful took to their Twitter and they posted saying, according to Lonnie Love, there are no real plus size icons for me. Hello Beautiful then posed the question to Twitter fans asking, what about Aretha Franklin, Oprah and Queen Latifah? Thoughts ladies? After Hello Beautiful listed Oprah, Aretha Franklin, and Queen Latifah as a few real plus size icons, Lani Love responded and she seemed to disagree saying, Aretha Franklin never had a plus size fashion line. Queen Latifah was a cover girl but was not affiliated with a plus size fashion brand. It's 2019 and you pulled sisters from 20 years ago. I said icons. Where is our Naomi Campbell? From here, it seems that Lonnie Love changed the conversation again, mentioning black plus size. Style Oversize responded saying, Lyris is black and she is not iconic because of what exactly? Based on your standards? Seriously asking because I don't know what you deem as iconic. As you can see, Lyris Cross was mentioned in these tweets and Lonnie Love responded to Lyris Cross, Style Oversize, and 
Ashley Graham. Lyra's Cross then entered the conversation, and this is where the conversation began that led to Lonnie Love blocking Lyra's Cross on Twitter. So yeah, I was very disappointed, right. especially since it's like, girl, me and you are two of the same. You know, like we black, we plus size, we both in in the industry. Like really, mm -hmm. yeah. And I and I remember I even said I think in my tweets like, yo, she blocked me, and I could see if I was disrespectful. Mm -hmm. I could Which see you if were I, not. yeah, like had total disregard for her feelings, but mm -hmm. I actually felt it was the other way around. After the Lyris Cross drama on Twitter, the plus size community was highly upset with Lonnie because the entire situation was just unnecessary and people just wanted her to apologize or maybe even retract her tweet or her statement that she originally made. But instead, she started blocking people and she started deleting tweets. Again, she made a generalized statement and she shouldn't have done that. You know, she generalized the entire plus size community and she threw the entire community under the bus because she felt like there weren't any plus size fashion icons in the industry and that's not true we have people like ashley graham and there are so many others you guys and so that was kind of like a knock or you know to the women that have made ways and made changes within the plus size industry and then she turned around and retracted her statement and made it about black women not having any representation of being plus size and being a icon i could understand if Lonnie spoke on her experience saying well I don't see any women of my size being represented on the icon level I think people and people within the plus size community could understand that because her size is not really glorified but Lyris Cross and Ashley Graham their size is and it's the main focus when you speak on the plus size community people were also pointing out the fact that she just simply couldn't show recognition or appreciation for another black woman that was basically in the same position as her and you know there are rumors or there have been rumors that Tamar Braxton was fired because of her also moving on to Charlemagne Charlemagne decided to respond to Lonnie Love after she made the statement a lot of black men don't know how to have faithful relationships let's go ahead and take a look to see what he had to say on the real they were talking about some comments that Joe Button made where he said that he could understand why Kevin Hart cheated on his wife I don't speak for the black community but I do think think that a lot of black men, they really don't know how to have true, faithful relationships. I disagree. They think because they have money, because they have power, that they can treat women any kind of way. We are still dealing with the point of uh, slavery, and we are descendants of slavery, and because our families were broken up, we still do not have an idea of how to have together families, because our families were broken oh, up. Oh, Lord. I disagree. Mm -hmm. First of all, I disagree with Joe Budden's comments. Doesn't matter if you're broke or rich, successful or unsuccessful. If a man wants to cheat, he's going to cheat. Doesn't matter if his boys are around or not, like Kevin Hart said. Doesn't matter if he works hard, that like Joe facts. said. Men cheat because they want to. Men cheat to feed their egos. We sleep with different women because it makes us feel better about ourselves. You know why I stopped cheating? Because it wasn't making me feel good. You know why it wasn't making me feel good? Because you get tired of lying and hurting the one you love. But you, you know grew how, up. Exactly. But you know how I came to that conclusion? Because I started working on myself in healing my trauma. So when you start doing that, it's not as easy to hurt the ones you love. And being a faithful husband and a great father is not feeding my ego, it's feeding my soul. And that makes me feel better than any ego boost or other piece of poom poom could ever. Okay? Well, all okay. right. Who are you getting mad at? Get I just don't like when people throw those narratives out there gracious, about black people. Like, like, I salute to Lonnie Love, but damn, Lonnie, like, as, as a black person, how can you just push that kind yes, of narrative? Yes, everybody cheats. It has nothing to do with black, white, Word. Asian, or anything. People cheat, like you said, to feed ego. When they grow That's up it. and they realize that they're hurting the people that they love, <laughs> hopefully they smarten up and they realize it's not worth Joe it. Joe like, oh, because men work hard. And Kevin's like, oh, because my boys went around. No, nigga, <laughs> you cheated because you wanted to cheat because you was feeding your ego. That's Correct. it. Correct. That's it. Nothing more, nothing you less. You want a hug, bro? You know how I know? God. How you know? Because I was a cheater. Oh, okay. How do you know, Envy? Because I, I cheated That's before, it. man. That's it. Like, yo, ain't no excuses. I'm not proud of it. All these excuses And I don't want to talk about it. That was a bad time in my life. I don't life. even know that nigga Well, no you guys are both black men who cheated, so. First of all, <laughs> black men don't cheat. We were black boys, boys. who cheated. That's right. Uh, it was a difference. Boy, boy, boy! That's right. <laughs> Not a boy anymore, ye. That's right. Grown-ass grown -ass man. Grown-ass man. And I don't feed my ego. I feed my soul. I love my wife. 
Now, I don't always agree with Charlemagne the God, but when it comes to this conversation, I 100% agree with what he's saying. And in my opinion, when it comes to this cheating in black men, if we're going to get insight on cheating and if we're going to get insight on black men, I think it's best that it comes from a black man who has cheated before and he is able to reflect and also own the fact that he cheated and also reflect on the fact that he has learned from his past mistakes. So if we're going to take advice from someone, it would come from someone who has walked in those shoes. And that is my opinion personally. And, you know, the fact that Charlemagne has been able to make those changes in his life and he's in therapy and he's really trying to work on himself. Um, that's something that I can appreciate coming from anyone. It doesn't even have to be a black man. So moving on, uh, one thing that I couldn't help but notice, and this is strictly coming from my opinion, you know, I really can't take the statement seriously when it comes from Lonnie Love and black men because she has made some poor, and I mean poor choices in men and especially when she dated black men she got married young and she also dated young she dated men that were way younger than her and she also uses her love life as like this way to monetize her life and I just think it's just irresponsible because from her past public relationships it's always about can Lonnie find love as if it's like some dating show or something it's just really weird to me and then when she got with this white man she really like prayed him around like he's a trophy or something like she won a prize or something it's just really really weird to me but I don't get that vibe from other swirlers I didn't get that vibe from Serena Williams I didn't get that vibe from Eve I didn't get that vibe from Joni Smith Turner but I definitely get that vibe from Lonnie Love so Lonnie I want to hear what's going on with the uh, love life it's a time it's our segment Lonnie's love update okay So here's what we were going to do. We were going to read a few letters. People are still writing in, interested in you, because we said we were going to find someone for you. Uh, but then you mentioned that you're still seeing this guy, mm -hmm. and you didn't mention that he's here today, but luckily we have cameras backstage and we catch everything, oh. so we know he's here today. And so I want I've never met him. <laughs> and we convinced him to come out here. He's not in the business, so he's No, he's not. Yeah, he said he's coming out. Come, what's his name? Sam. Come on out, Sam. How she said you're twenty three. You're not twenty three. How old are you? I'm twenty three. No, you're not. Yes, I am. You're 23? That's how I do it, baby. I like it young. <laughs> What's your birthday? Tell me your birthday real fast. September 30th, 1990. What? September 30th, 1990. You asking too many uh, questions to black men. Don't do that. Don't give out that information. Why? Don't do what happens? That. What's going to happen? Don't ask the last right. name. How okay. did y'all... Birthdays. How did y'all meet? Where'd you meet? We met at a comedy club. At a, so you saw her do stand-up? No. She was eating nachos. <laughs> And you just happened to be at the comedy club. Yes. I was eating my nachos, drinking my brown liquor, minding my business. And then I saw him, and what did I say to you? Hey, baby, you want a drink? <laughs> that's how I do it, uh -huh. you know? Yeah, wow. so I know what I'm talking about. When I hear y'all little marriage stories, let me uh -huh. tell y'all, I was, I was very young in the stand-up game. I had just left my job, mm -hmm. and I had a gig, um, and I met this young man. Ooh, he was fine, okay? I was fine, he was fine, we fell in love, and one day he told me, because we had spent like maybe two years together, uh -huh. and he told me to uh, meet him in Vegas one day, and I met him in Vegas, and he popped the question, <gasps> and we got married, and I was like, yeah, it's on, but... Hey. <laughs> okay. But. What happened was, yeah. 
No, seriously, marriage is a serious situation. It is. And I was really young in my stand-up career, and I really wanted to be an entertainer. I had already left engineering because I didn't want to be in a traditional relationship. Mm -hmm. And then, I, you know, I was in love, but it takes a lot. He needed to move to another state, and that wouldn't allow me to be a stand-up. So I really mm -hmm. had to make a decision of, did I really want to, you know, have that settled-down family life, or, you know, was I going to be an entertainer? So when it comes to this situation, I feel that people have a right to be upset because she did go on The Real, which is a daily talk show, and she did generalize black men as if white men don't cheat. And, you know, in my opinion, when it comes to white men and them cheating, especially the men who have money and power, their type of cheating is on a whole other level as far as them having sex trafficking rings with underage kids. And I have to say kids because some of them have been caught with little boys as well with this whole sex trafficking thing so for her to sit there and make that statement as if black men are the only ones that cheat when they have money and power I think that was just very irresponsible of her and she shouldn't have made that generalization but that's all that I have regarding this video you guys I would love your thoughts and opinions on this topic do you feel that Lonnie Love is showing signs of self-hatred make sure you comment down below and if you haven't please hit that notification bell so that you are notified for when I upload and subscribe if you're new and I'll catch you guys in my next one.